Turing was um, giving a graduate course on uh, mathematical logic at Cambridge. I guess this is early 1939, and Wittgenstein, who was in a different college, he was in Trinity College, he was giving um, a graduate course on the foundations of mathematics, and Turing attended Wittgenstein's course. They must have been some of the most interesting philosophy lectures that have ever occurred, not just Turing and Wittgenstein, but many names that are now famous philosophers, um, but in those days just graduate students. Norman Malcolm, for example, Casimir Louis, many great names. And Wittgenstein was uh, an unusual lecturer. Um, he would say things like, I, I just feel too stupid today to, to, uh, to explain what I mean, and I just can't begin. And so there was an edginess to his lectures. A lot of the lectures consisted of discussion, back and forth discussion between Turing and Wittgenstein. Um, Turing was, a, it's, it's, it's clear that as far as Wittgenstein was concerned, Turing was the main person there in the audience. It was Turing, by and large, that Wittgenstein wanted to talk to. And so there are these, uh, in, in the notes of the lectures which were public, reconstructed and published by Cora Diamond a few years ago, there are these wonderful pages of dialogue between Turing and Wittgenstein. It's some of the, the best records that we've got of Turing actually speaking. Um, and they, they covered the field of, you know, fascinating mathematical ideas. Um, there was one group of lectures about uh, contradictions in mathematics. Bertrand Russell had put the cat among the pigeons a few years later by proving that set theory, which is this fundamental area of mathematics, um, was inconsistent as it was formulated then. You could prove contradictions in set theory. Um, and so as far as mathematicians knew, there might be contradictions all over mathematics. And Many um, people who worked in the foundations of mathematics viewed this as a terrible danger because these contradictions could kind of spread to the world beyond mathematics, the real world, and might cause real damage in the real world. Turing says at one point to Wittgenstein, um, well, look, the bridges might fall down if there are contradictions in mathematics. Engineers would use the mathematics and the inconsistencies would show up in the calculations going wrong and the bridges collapsing. Um, and Wittgenstein sort of gently points out that, well, nothing of that nature has ever actually happened. So Wittgenstein is saying maybe this panic about inconsistencies in mathematics is misplaced. Um, it doesn't actually lead us into any difficulties. And then the, there is another um, absorbing group of lectures where Wittgenstein is talking about experimental mathematics, the possibility of doing experiments in mathematics. Um, and Turing disagrees with Wittgenstein. In fact, they mostly disagree, um, although Wittgenstein tries to reassure his class. He says, actually, um, Turing doesn't disagree with a word that I'm saying. It's just the ideas underlying what I'm saying that make him uncomfortable. I can't remember the exact words, but Wittgenstein says something like, um, Turing is afraid that I'm introducing Bolshevism into mathematics, but this is far from the case. Um, but anyway, Turing disagreed with Wittgenstein about uh, experimental mathematics. Turing was uh, quite pro the idea of doing experiments in mathematics. Um, Wittgenstein thought you just couldn't. He said, um, mathematics is petrified. It's sort of, it's been elevated above the realm at which experimentation is possible. Mathematics is just sort of frozen into place, and no amount of experimentation that you could do would change it. And Wittgenstein said, if only I could explain my ideas clearly enough, then Turing would come to agree with me that experiments in mathematics are impossible. Um, unfortunately, Wittgenstein never did manage to make his ideas clear enough. And Turing went on to um, pioneer computer-assisted experimental mathematics in Manchester after the war at the console of, the, um, of the, the Manchester computer, the first stored program electronic computer ever to be built, the first universal Turing machine in electronic hardware that the world saw. And Turing sat at the console pioneering um, exactly what 
that Kenstein had said was impossible, experimental mathematics.